Hi guys, uh, so this video is about Spring Boot Roadmap. So how you can progress from basics to advanced or if you are done with your Java skills and side by side you want to learn Spring Boot, right? You can follow this roadmap. So let's discuss first phase one. So phase one is basically about Spring Boot basics, right? So if you are starting your journey as a Spring Boot developer or if you are a student or a fresher who wants to learn Spring Boot, you can start with the phase one. So inside phase one, at high level, we have introduction, then fundamentals, then how you can create restful web service and then of course handling the data with spring data gpa and dev tool right so these are high level topics and if we go a little bit deep inside right so you should know like how to create a project using a spring initializer right so basically if i go to start.spring.io right so you should be aware about what is maven what is gradle right language java and how to fill these details what is the packaging what does jar means what does war mean right and how these are used in the maven and gradle so you should be able to set up your own project and know what all these terms means right and you should able to add dependencies here if you want to uh, let's say do web so you should include spring web right so basically you need first step is to get familiar with start.spring.io and get familiar with gradle and maven which is very important uh, for configuration and how you can play with the dependencies inside spring boot once you are done right uh, with the simple like why to use spring how to set up a project then you should move to annotations and profiling right so annotation we all know like there are a lot of spring boot annotations so if i go here right so we have spring boot application we have transactional we have configuration we have enable auto configuration component scan a bean right so i will not go through the details but it, this is just to show you like we have around 20 to 25 important spring boot annotation which everyone should be aware of right and once you are done with annotations right you should be aware about how to set up the profiles play with the configuration we have application dot yaml files right uh, so all that things you should be knowing right and then once you are done with all the annotation you should be setting up the database using either h2 mysql or mongodb or couchbase right any no sql database so you should be know how to handle like database right and how to use a jpa repository and crud repository so these are very essentials and is used heavily in production application so you should be aware about this and then simple dev tools like how to enable hot reloading right and other dev tools which are essentials for uh, developers like us right once you are done with this right you have to move to the next level which is intermediate spring boot so in intermediate spring boot right so whatever things you need to dip at the production level application right so you should be aware how to handle exception you should be aware how to do security you should be aware about apis you should be aware how to write your unit and integration test cases. You should be aware once you deploy how to use actuator and how to monitor your application, right? So after basics, so with the help of basics, you should, you will be able to write the code, right? But then once you have to make your code production ready, right? Then these features comes into picture, right? So if I talk about some of these, like you should be aware exception handler, right? Controller advice, global exception handling, how to do basic authentication, and then JSON web tokens, right? This is a very important topic. And then you should be using like REST APIs, how to version it, like parameters are there, headers are there, URI is there. Then unit testing, JUnit and Mokito, right? Is being used heavily. And then integration testing with Spring Boot test. And then again, actuator endpoints, it will give you health URL, it will give you all the other things which you need to monitor your application, right? And also you can create your custom and you can also integrate with the monitoring tools like uh, Grafana and Prometheus. So once you do this, right? So your code is little bit progressing toward production ready code, right? Because once you deploy your code to production, then with the help of these features, you will be able to at least track your request, right? Uh, and you, you should be confident about security, then actuator and monitoring and logging will also come here. So you should also know how to do logging right here. Phase one and phase two are really good. Like if you are at a level, you already know phase one and at phase two, you are already at a very good level, I would say. And then I would go to the next level, which is advanced level. So in advanced level, you should be able to play a little bit deep with the profile annotations uh, like you should be aware how to implement at a production level right environment specific beans and switching the profiles like of course you would know these basics right but how to integrate it right uh, so you have to go one level deep and 
actually integrate and use it right and then spring cloud so these days you know spring cloud everyone is using spring cloud right and then eureka server right this is like service discovery with eureka this is a very important concept so actually this is like a if you have let's say 10 microservice like user service product account right so you can register your service in eureka and then all the service will talk to each other via eureka right so eureka is like a middleware or you can say registry for your uh, microservices and then api gateway is important right uh, like uh, you can control DDoS attack at the API gateway. You can implement retry pattern at API gateway, right? Basically, some of the fault tolerance can be done at API gateway level. And then how to configure with Spring Cloud Config. So this is also important. So no matter what cloud you are using, but you should know like how to play with the config file of cloud so that you can configure and deploy, right? Uh, and all that things. These are all the topics which comes under advanced Spring Boot, especially the mostly use is Eureka, Service Discovery and Spring Cloud, right? So these two concepts you should be knowing if you are an experienced developer or if you want to enhance your skill uh, further, right? So once you're done with this, right, uh, then we can go to phase four, which is microservices and communication. So this is also very important, like especially when you're, you have a lot of services and your volume is too high, right? When you're working on uh, enterprise level systems. So inter-service communication, again, because when you work in an enterprise application, you might have hundred of services, right? And calling the services with the URLs is not a, uh, I think, not an efficient way. So you need to do inter-service communication, how to do that, right? You can uh, use these clients, right? Simplified service and then fault tolerance. For fault tolerance, there are a lot of libraries, but I will recommend you to explore Resilience 4J. So you can do circuit breaker, you can do retry pattern and all the other things which comes under fault tolerance. So you should explore Resilience 4J and try to integrate in your microservice, then distributed tracing with Sleuth and Zipkin, right? So now what happens is, let's say you have 10 requests, right? You have 10 requests. Now, if someone logins to your page, then all the 10 services are triggered right one by one or there will be some pattern right so to track the request right so you have trace id and span id concept so basically what will happen is so trace id and span id will be used which comes under sleuth right so it will take care of that thing so you don't have to do this configuration at every level so that this is basically unique for every request and you can track when it happens how the flow looks right and all these metrics will be sent to zipkin so Zipkin is basically your visualization tool. So you can see like how the orchestration is happening for the request level, right? And how the inter-service communication is happening. You can really visualize that. So that's why this distributed tracing is really important according to me. And then Spring Cloud Bus. So Spring Cloud Bus, then you should be able to do, uh, you know, Kafka is there, then RabbitMQ is there, right? So all that things you should be aware. Then even driven architecture. Event driven architecture is uh, really good. So everything is happening as a event driven, right? And streams are so popular. So you should be able to see Spring Cloud Stream and then you will be able to implement event driven microservices. So these are really like when you already know this advanced concept, then this is really the next level to make, you know, your service more reliable, to make your service uh, more uh, monitored uh, with the distributed tracing, right? And even driven architecture comes into picture. So once you're done with this, right? So last phase will be your deployment and tools. So basically you should know about Docker, you should know about CI CD, you should know about Kubernetes, you should know about logging, and you should know about like uh, ELK stack, right? Elasticsearch, Kibana, Logstash, and alerting, right? So that's what I have written here. You should be setting up CI CD pipeline with Jenkins, GitHub action is very important. Then any cloud platform you can explore, everyone gives like some trial version. So I, my favorite, my favorite is GCP. So you can try it out or do some uh, commands and Kubernetes, right? You can even deploy a Docker in your local laptop and try to play with it, right? So it will help you to understand how the, this Docker thing works and how you can configure it with the different configuration, Helm file is there and all that things are there, right? And then alerts is very important and then you can also use different tools like Splunk is there uh, and for dashboards uh, we have I think App Dynamic is there right and 
other tools are there uh, which you can use for alerting and dashboard which comes under application performance management apm tools we call it as apm tools so i also made a top five tools uh, in my instagram reel you can check that out also and then caching is there you can implement spring cache or you can implement redis and all that things because caching comes under performance right so you have to see where you can cache and which tool you can use you can use uh, mem cache right memory cache you can use redis and you can use other uh, level of hashing so these are all the things so if you found this video helpful don't forget to like subscribe and hit that bell icon for more programming content